Welcome to Matplotlib, where we get to draw some nice, pretty graphs and charts and things like that. Huge fun. Matplotlib, Mathematical Plotting Library, is one of the companion packages to NumPy in the large SciPy ecosystem for scientists and engineers. It is a very flexible graph and figure plotting package for use, as I say, by scientists and engineers. Loosely modelled on MATLABs, but with a lot of differences. In fact, so many differences, I don't even know why I bother to say that. It's probably a bit more powerful for 2D and a bit weaker for 3D. It produces graphs that are publication quality, so you can include them in journal articles, things like that. There's a word of warning, it has two separate interfaces, which is a bit annoying. First of all, there's a pile of global functions that you can get if you use something called PyLab. It dumps this great porridge of functions into your global namespace, and then you can proceed to call them and manipulate global state, just like MATLAB. What do I think of that? That icon says it all. <coughs> if you want to do it properly, you use the object-oriented interface, which has things like figures and axes and so on. You create a figure, you add axes to it, you call various methods of the axes to set the scales and so on. This is a modern, clean, well-designed interface to Matplotlib. Guess which one I'm using? You're right, this one. There is a slight complication though, and the complication is that if you search the web for solutions like how do I plot a graph with Matplotlib, you are liable to land up on the MATLAB-like interface. That's because, or so I assume, there's a whole heap of MATLAB refugees out there who haven't yet managed to escape from the world of global functions and global state. They haven't learnt the way, the truth and the life yet. So let's not be like them, let's deal with the OO interface, which is the one that the designers plead and beg for you to use, and uh, stay away from this lot. If you are going to Google for solutions to Matplotlib problems, start by Googling for the Axis class. That's where everything lies, or at least as the starting point, it's very well documented, very clean interface. What can you do with Matplotlib? Well, there's some of the things. It's got a huge heap of them. If you visit that gallery there, the second of those two links, you'll just be amazed. Just scroll through how many different types of charts there are. I just fished out a few. There's a standard line plot. Here's a histogram with uh, dotted lines over it. Here's a bar chart. Here's different uh, axes used, all packed into one figure. This is four axes on one figure. Sort of linear scales, log log, linear log, etc. Here's a plot contour plot of some um, density function or something like that, and 3D plots as well. But there's way, way more. Have a look there. There's just so many different plots. Obviously, we're not going to cover them all in this course. So let's get plotting something. Over here, I have a first graph plotting exercise, which I'm going to do something like this interactively, step by step, so you can see what happens at each stage. So the first thing I'm going to do is run that two-line program there, which begins with an, an important new incantation. Import matplotlib.pyplot as plot. You already know and love that import. Here's a new one for you. This gives us a PLT object, which refers to the matplotlib Python plotting package. Let's run it. We're in business. The first thing I'm going to do then is give myself a new set of axes on which I can do something. We just write axes is plot.axes. This is the easiest way to get myself a simple graph. There are others, we'll look at them later. There we are, and the graph pops up straight over there. I'm going to briefly tweak something. I'm going to rearrange my desktop a little to make it better so you can see what's going on. So now we can start doing something to the axes. In order to plot something, I need some data to plot. I'm going to first of all demonstrate that you can plot data using raw Python data. It doesn't have to be numpy stuff. So let's give myself some x data. So my x's are going to be the range from 0 to 100 inclusive. So I have to mention 101 at the top of the range. I'm also going to generate a convenient function. Let's have the y's are equal to x times x for x in x's. This is a list comprehension. If you haven't learned them yet, then maybe now would be a good time. This is going to be a quadratic function. Let's plot it. Axes dot plot the x's and the y's. What do we get? Surprise, surprise, we get a quadratic graph. We also get told that the result of that is a matplotlib lines line 2d object, which we won't be worrying about from now on. So I'm going to, well, I'll give it a grid, it looks a bit naked, axes.grid true. 
that gives me a coordinate grid that I can now see fairly clearly. Uh, what else do we need to do? We probably should give it a title, axes.setTitle. There's a whole heap of methods of the axes to set their properties. In this case, the, I'm going to set the title. So set underscore attribute name is a, is a common pattern you'll see. I'm going to set the title to my first graph. And of course, I should set axis labels as well because any good scientist and an engineer does that. Axis.setX label to something creative like, I don't know, X. And axis.set the Y label to see if you can guess what's coming up. Y, well done. Right, there's a graph. That's our first simple graph. What can I do with it? Well, there are a few things I can do with it. I can play with um, these things down here. I can pan it. I can configure the subplots. I suggest when you're working in the lab, you try some of those. This saves it to the disk or whatever as a file in various formats. So much for that. What I now want to do is look at the this version over here, which of course is in a program. We don't normally plot in the shell window. I'm just doing that so you can see at each stage what happens. So, a short pause while I rearrange my desktop again. Right, so I'm now back to normal programming in which I have the program code here copied into a wing window. If I run that program, it, I might mention this is a cut down version of that. We'll look at why it's cut down in a minute. When I run that, I get a sine wave. I hope. Come on, there you go. I get a sine wave. It doesn't have a title, it doesn't have X labels or Y labels. Also you'll note, and we'll come to this in a minute, that the axis labeling here is not in what you might regard as a natural position. So 300, 400, 500 degrees, whereas this one here is labeled at more appropriate points every 90 degrees, 90, 180, 270 and so on. I want to look at how we do that. So I'm going to close that and go back to this program and see what we can do with it. So first thing, the title. This title is sine theta. Now that's something new to you. The title has a Greek character in it, a theta. How do I do that? It turns out that NumPy or Matplotlib rather has uh, the wonderful ability to process what's called LaTeX. LaTeX is the industry standard mathematical typesetting language. It's used for virtually all the maths that you read in textbooks and things nowadays. At least that's my understanding of it. So I'm going to use that within a set title in NumPy, num, in uh, Matplotlib. So I'm going to go axes.set title, and I want to set the title to sine theta. So if I just go sine theta, then of course that's what it will appear as, and that's probably good enough for a lot of government work, but it's not good enough for real science. So let's turn that into something that is latex, latex I should say. So latex, I put thetas around, uh, sorry, I put dollars symbols around the maths. And I also want a theta which is written in latex with a backslash in front of it. Backslash theta is the theta symbol. If I do that, it doesn't quite work. Let's see what it does, because you may come across this problem in your own experiments. If I run it there, I get a graph in which the title is sine heater. No T. The backslash T has just vanished. Can you see why? It's vanished because backslash T is the tab character. It's recognized as a special two-character way of representing a single character, like backslash N, backslash R, and so on. So it gets treated as a special, and to turn off the specialness, I put an R for raw string in front. This is a special syntax you haven't seen before. It turns it into a raw string. Now when I do that, I should get the right answer. Let's just make sure that I got it right. I should see, I don't know why it takes so long in Windows, it's real quick on my machine. Sine theta, there it is, it looks like a theta. Similarly, the x-axis has got theta in degrees. I'm not going to go through that again, that's tedious. The other thing I want to do, or I look at two other things. First of all, I don't know whether you noticed, when we plotted that, the positions of the, uh, of, of the borders of the graph weren't quite where you might expect. They weren't at naught and 720. They were a little bit beyond at each case. You may like that. I didn't. I wanted the X range to be from exactly naught to 720. So I called the axes.set X limb. So you've got to set Y limb and set X limb, which sets the limits of the X axis. And I wanted it to be naught to, in this case, number cycles was 2 times 360. I could have typed in 720, but this is a nicer way to do it. So that sets the range precisely that the X axis covers, rather than using defaults. The other thing I wanted to do was to set the ticks 
the um, coordinate marks uh, at the right location. So I've got that statement there, which is set x ticks. As I say, there's a whole heap of set methods. Access.set x ticks, which I have to set at a suitable place, and I used np.a range to do that. I wanted to go from naught in to um, the number of cycles times 360, which of course is 720, 360, in and I had to go a little bit beyond because A range goes up to but not including that. So I added a little hack factor, 0.1, in steps of 90 degrees. And I think that's just about it. Let's run that and see if I've now got the same graph I had before, minus the x-axis label. Waiting, there it is. It looks good. I've got 360, 270, 180 and so on. So that's all for this particular video. Time to move on, or for me to move off. Thanks for watching. Bye.